buildings and the construction sector are responsible for over one third of the global energy consumption and almost 40% of the total direct and indirect CO2 emissions. Sadly, this figure is increasing. I think if I had one thing that I had to focus on, it would probably be the fight against climate change. I'm trying my best to do this at an individual level, like uh, eating less meat and being more mindful of what I buy. But as an architect, you have the opportunity and the skill sets to make a bigger impact. That's the optimistic me. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Dami and I am a licensed architect in beautiful Vancouver, BC. On this channel, we talk about architecture and design and also some tools and strategies that can help us have more meaningful and fulfilling careers in architecture. In reality, designing a truly sustainable building and actually measuring its carbon footprint is really hard. It's hard to track, it's hard to implement, and it's really hard to coordinate. Because the energy modeling is typically done by another consultant, there's a lot of back and forth, and it's rarely a part of the early design process and um, it really requires that everyone on the team, including the client, the contractor, the consultants, that everyone is perfectly aligned. Today, I wanna share with you a tool that tries to make the process a little bit easier. They reached out to me to share their tool with you guys. First of all, I just want to say like, I don't have a lot of energy modeling experience. I've watched my colleagues work on it and I've worked on a net zero project a very long time ago. I'm a real beginner at this and the idea of energy modeling actually sounds really scary to me. But after fiddling around with this tool a little bit, my first impression is that it's really, really easy to use and it's really accessible to everyone. Energy modeling, it should be a part of every architect's toolbox. In fact, Ever since Cove Tool launched, buildings designed with this tool has helped offset 27.6 million tons of CO2 in just four years. First of all, I wanna start off by giving you a little bit of background on what is an energy model, and then I'll be giving you a little walkthrough of the tool and just give you my first impressions. And if you are a seasoned energy modeler, you have some thoughts and you've experienced other tools, please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments so we can all learn. So what is an energy model? An energy model is a series of calculations generated by your computer that gives you information on the anticipated energy consumption of your building. It simulates how much energy the building's gonna consume and it's used to help designers make smarter decisions and it's used to give the owners a sense of how much the energy bill's gonna cost. And it also gives you a glimpse into the future of your building so that you can make informed decisions during the design process. However, a lot of the times, that's not how energy models are actually used. Most owners and designers use it kind of as a verification document to meet energy performance requirements from the city or certification programs like LEED. Because a lot of the times consultants are kind of involved too late or someone else is doing the modeling, so there's a lot of back and forth. Modeling also takes a long time and it's very complicated. So the longer your consultant takes to give you feedback, the harder it is to implement on your project. Just overall, there's a lot of friction in the process. I think one of the biggest game changers of Cove Tool is that it automates a lot of the painful processes of digging into the energy standards. Every jurisdiction has its own energy standards that you need to meet. For example, Vancouver is gonna have a different requirement than somewhere like Houston. On this tool, you just have to put in your location, the energy code that you have to follow, the building type and geometry, and the platform pre-populates a lot of the data for you. 
It also populates the data based on which climate zone you're in. They have a database of currencies, utility rates, carbon emissions, weather data, energy code, and as they grow, they're constantly updating their database to include more and more regions worldwide. Having access to this data in the early stages of design as you're designing the building is gonna give you so much control over the energy targets and operational costs and just the overall building performance. You can create more accurate models in significantly less time and reduce the back and forth between you and your building scientist or envelope consultant. I really feel like this is a tool that we should have had five years ago. So if you've seen a tool like this, please let me know. And if you're a developer, please make a tool like this. Anyways, all in all, I think this is something that is very exciting. It's something that should be in every designer's toolbox and it should be a part of every designer's design process. We really shouldn't leave it up to the engineers and we really shouldn't leave it till in the later stages of the design to do this modeling because the best way to do energy modeling is as a design tool to help you make informed decisions along the way. Energy modeling is going to be a part of our future and I think it's very worthwhile to spend the time to learn this tool or any other energy modeling tool and just familiarize yourself with it. So the very first thing that you do when you come into CoTool and you start your project is you choose what building type it is. So it can be an office, it can be a hotel, it can be a school for education, hospital, lab, and all of these will have different energy requirements. And you also put in your location here. So let's put in Vancouver, BC. And so you'll see later that it's gonna actually place my building in this location in Vancouver. So I know that I'm doing a project in Vancouver and you know that in Vancouver, all the buildings have to be done to a certain standard. And here that standard is ASHRAE 2019. So you select that. And maybe if you're in a different location, let's say you're in um, Houston, Texas. Let's see. Oh, look at that. They have different regulations there. It doesn't have the other national um, energy code. So it'll give you a selection of energy standards that your region requires. Once you come onto the tool, you have two options. Uh, you can either use their native drawing tool, which I'll walk you through in a sec, or you can import your geometry from a modeling software that you already use, Revit, SketchUp, Rhino. You download a Cove tool plugin for that software, and that plugin is gonna help you export the geometry into the analysis tool. So uh, I'm just gonna show you how to use the drawing tool. So it's super straightforward, actually. Um, I've already kind of created a building here, but um, you wanna draw walls. You draw a wall. And you can place windows. You can determine the size of the windows over here. You can add overhangs. You can determine the depth of the overhang or the fins, and you can create rooms. Whoops. You can create rooms within. And once you draw this in, you can determine what type 
of room this is going to be, like what the function of this room is going to be. Once you select on this room, you can determine uh, what function the room is going to be used for, which is going to change your energy consumption. Like, for example, if you have a washroom that's going to require more HVAC than uh, somewhere like an office. And if you have a food prep area, you're going to need more ventilation. So um, yeah, you just select that right in here and you can see that it populates all of this data, like preset data for you. So you don't have to go in and put in these numbers yourself. So once you do that, you can also create more floors. So if you want to create a third floor, um, this uh you just press this button and basically you are on the third floor so let me just try drawing a couple of walls here just to show you so i'm on the third floor now i'm on the fourth floor you see i've drawn in these Walls. And so you go into 3D, you can see those um, stacked floors on top of this building. So um, let's get rid of all this garbage. And then from here, you can assign Foreman's value to these wall assemblies. So this wall, every wall has a insulation value, an R value. And so you can kind of go in and plug that in there based on what your assembly is made out of. You can do that same for the, for the glazing. You put in the R value. Uh, remember I was showing you the overhangs? So if you look at it in 3D, you can see that by just sliding this, I can create multiple overhangs and I can also change the depth of the overhang. I can also create fins, two fins. And you can change the depth of the fins here as well. That's basically what the drawing tool does. And once you're done here, you export the 3D model into your drawing analysis tool. It takes a couple seconds for it to do the analysis. And look at that. There is Vancouver right there. And so you just press on this little button here and you can locate your building properly. So once you open the analysis tool, you'll see a bunch of buildings. <laughs> this is, um, okay, yeah, perfect. This is on Robson Square. And so you might have a hard time finding exactly where your building is. So you just press on this little pencil tool right here and you'll find this little arrow. Once you find that little arrow, you can move your project whichever way you want and just locate it properly. So let's say it's just sitting at the corner of the site. Um, you unpress this, voila, there it is. Um, you can also change the height of these buildings. Let's say you actually took a proper site survey and you know that, okay, like this building is actually a lot taller. So you can go in and change this building height because that's gonna affect the shadows on your site, right? So you wanna, you can go in and, okay, you went there and you measured that it's 25 meters. So you just go in and change that. And if you know that, okay, that's actually, that building's been demolished and it's much smaller now, you can just go in there and change it. Okay, so once you have that, 
uh, unclick the pencil. It gives you a bunch of different analysis tools. So first of all, it gives you a shadow study of your site. So click on the shadows and you can look at how the buildings around your site affects the light that you're getting in your building. It also has a tool for COVID. So based on the area of your building, it recommends an occupancy. So based on the layout, it's recommending an 89% occupancy rate, which is 154 people. And it gives you a recommended number for each level. It also gives you what kind of views you can get. So you can kind of scroll through. So SDA basically calculates how much useful daylight your, uh, your space receives. So if you're in an office, uh, the productivity increases based on how much daylight you have. So it has a direct impact on the well-being of the people working there. And so there is a baseline for that. And it looks like in this building, it is far beneath the passable number, which here seems to be 50 based on the energy standard that we put in. What we have to do is go in and probably change the size of the glazing or uh, shift around the building or change the geometry of the building to make this passable. And ASC is basically um, how much unwanted sunlight your space receives. And so the green area is all pass. And then in the red areas are the areas that you'd want to watch out for. And the radiation gives you a sense of how much solar radiation your building is getting. And this is a good way for you to determine where you can put in solar panels. And sun hours is how many hours of sunlight you're getting on your building. And when you go into the baseline section, it actually gives you a pretty thorough breakdown of what your energy consumption is compared to the baseline. So this is your energy consumption right here, your EUI. And the baseline for 2030 is 301. And the 2030 target is 60. So if you want to meet the 2030 target, then you'll have to go back into the drawing and change some parts of the design. And it gives you a good sense of how much energy your building's going to consume, how much your electricity bill is going to be, and how much your CO2 reduction is. And here you can see the breakdown of your energy usage. So what's interesting here is that you have a disproportionately high heating load compared to the cooling load. That's telling you is that you're not taking advantage of your sunlight. You're not taking advantage of your passive heating strategies. So you could increase the size of the windows on the southwest side, or you could increase the insulation of your walls. And you can quickly do that by changing the value of the envelope here. And over here at the bottom, it gives you a very general breakdown of your energy usage. So cooling, your cooling load is not dominating your energy use. This is because your HDD are higher than your CDDAs. Okay, so that just means that um, you have more days of the year where you need to heat the building than when you need to cool the building. And heating, that's, we've seen in this graph, that's the biggest culprit of our energy use. So your heating load is dominating your energy use. That's because your HDD are higher than your CDD days. You can reduce your heating load by um, facade, HVAC systems, or reducing infiltration. So yeah, you can obviously replace your HVAC system, but probably um, what you wanna do with the design is first um, by modifying the facade. So like I said before, adding more glazing on the Southwest side, 
um, or um, reducing infiltration, um, making the envelope more airtight, making the envelope more insulated, and your lighting load, and so on and so forth. Your lighting load contributes to 21.23 of the total EUI. Yeah, and it just continues to give you advice on how you can reduce your energy loads on lighting, equipment, hot water, fans, and pumps. And it also um, gives you some suggestions on placing photovoltaic panels. And if you do let's optimize, it'll kind of take the analysis of what's given and give you suggestions on how to optimize the building. So probably one of the most valuable features of Cove tool is this optimization tool. Basically helps you explore different alternatives to find the most beneficial solution in terms of price, in terms of energy usage, in terms of operational costs. Sometimes there's more than one way to solve a problem. Like we saw in the example before, you could lower the heating load of a building by thickening up the insulation of the walls, or you could improve the HVAC system. This tool basically uses parametric modeling to explore all of these alternatives and produces or suggests these bundles. And you can choose a bundle kind of based on how much money your client's willing to spend upfront and how much energy you would be saving with this type of investment and what your client's payback period is expected to be and you know so on and so forth so with the strategy you can kind of see like okay maybe from a overall cost and like energy standpoint it's better for me to use wall insulation and glass rather than choosing a more expensive hvac system so i just kind of breeze through the fundamentals of the tool but there's so many more functions that i didn't really cover in this video if you're interested in trying out the tool for yourself you can sign up for a free trial using the link in the description and they have really great support teams that can help you uh, get started and help you through any questions that you have so let me know what you think is energy modeling a part of your design process and if so how does this compare to other tools that you've used also do you have any great app ideas that can help the industry <laughs> let me know in the comments below so that's the end of the video hope you guys enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up if you're not subscribed hit the subscribe button and i'll see you in the next video bye